the channel. Today we're going to do a video on our Acura Legend. Anybody who's familiar with the Acura Legend knows that it suffers from ABS pump failure. And the reason for that is that old fluid gets crystallized and stops the motor, causing it to overheat and then ultimately breaking the motor. Well, we showed you in an earlier video how to reseal and how to replace the uh, ABS motor on the bottom of the unit. Well, today we're going to show you how to bleed the system. And this is a routine maintenance item on our Acura Legend. We do it once a year just to make sure that that old fluid doesn't have a chance to stop that ABS motor. So let's go ahead and get into the video and we'll show you how we do it. Now, I will disclose that the process I'm going to show you isn't actually the book process. The book process requires a special set of equipment, which we don't have, but essentially what we're going to be doing is powering up the unit enough to give us that pressure and clean out that old fluid. Now, you should take precautions here to make sure that you don't cause um, a premature pump failure by wrongly connecting the wires that we're going to show you, but also take precaution in not running the pump too long so that you don't overuse it and burn it out. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get into the video. All right, let's go over the things that you're going to need to do the bleeding of your ABS pump. So there's a couple things that are optional here, but I'm going to give you what I do, and then you can figure out if you want to modify this in any way. So you're going to want some brake part cleaner, and the reason why is because inevitably you'll get some brake fluid somewhere, and it's better to have that brake parts cleaner to dilute that. You could also use water if you choose. You're going to need your brake fluid, dot three, and that's what I have right there, the Honda. You're going to want a bottle to catch it, um, what comes out of the pump. You're going to want something to extract the ABS fluid that's currently in your reservoir. And you're going to want a really long power lead and a somewhat short or shorter ground wire. You're going to want a 10 millimeter socket and preferably this tool. What this tool is, is a Honda ABS bleeder. It has a tube that goes through the end of it and on the other end it has the proper square fitting. Now we'll go over um, an alternative that you can use if you don't want to purchase this tool. I happen to just make my life easier by purchasing this. It makes it so much easier just to twist and then twist it back with the pump on. But before we go into that, let me show you the two important wires that you're going to want to know. So this is your ABS motor right here. You have a blue-white harness that connects to a red-white wire, and then you have on that blue-white wire connector a black wire, and then going to the pump is a green wire. So your red-white is your power in, and the green is your ground. And that's going to become uh, important here in just a moment when I go over what we're going to do. And one thing you want to do for your power wires, you want to get one of these, which is an inline fuse holder. And this will allow you the ability to insert a 50 amp fuse. And why you want to do that is in case you have any overload when you're trying to power up the ABS pump. By inserting an inline fuse, for a 50 amp fuse based on the manufacturer's recommendation for what the fuse is, you'll make sure that if an overcharge happens that it doesn't end up damaging your uh, ABS pump. So basically what you do is you insert the fuse into here, we cut this, and then we just um, solder it or use uh, butt connectors to connect into your power wire for this project. So. Just a real quick tip there, you want to protect your ABS pump and by doing so you'll insert an inline fuse. You can pick these up from most um, uh, parts stores or online at like Amazon. So I'll put a link into the description for you otherwise uh, this is a pretty simple process. Alright so here's your ABS pump. This is your reservoir and below it is the motor and accumulator assembly and your solenoids. So all of this right here makes up your ABS pump and if you haven't already seen our ABS reseal um, go ahead and take a look at that that will go in more depth into what's going on in all the components but what we want to focus on for this video is just cycling the fluid out of your ABS pump this is the front side of the ABS pump and right here you can see this little bleeder valve and it's a square bleeder valve 
Well, you can fit an eight millimeter wrench on there. And if you're able to get that wrench in from the side, you have a fair chance of bleeding it without using that special tool. But using that special tool does allow you to go straight through here and make everything easier. The 10 millimeter ratchet that I recommend is to remove this right here, which attaches right there. Just being able to move this out of the way and gain some mobility in this space will actually aid you, but might not be totally necessary. To get started on this project, you want to go ahead and remove the old fluid from your reservoir. Here I'm using a syringe application, first by removing the filter that exists inside the reservoir and then going ahead and putting my nozzle all the way to the bottom of the reservoir and pulling out slowly as to avoid any unnecessary air bubbles that may occur. As you can see here, as I'm uh, withdrawing the fluid, that fluid looks pretty yellow. Brake fluid in general should be clear in nature. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the filter back in and I'm going to top off the reservoir with new Honda fluid. This will make sure that as you push the old fluid out that you have new fluid replacing it once we start the bleeding process. You want to make sure that you fill the fluid all the way to the max and perhaps a little past the max line on the side of the reservoir. The reason being is that the pump spins so fast it will push out the volume of fluid in a quick fashion. So by making sure that you have a little extra in your reservoir, you'll ensure that the pump doesn't run dry. Here I'm applying a rag to the area to make sure that if I drop any fluid, I'm not going to damage any of the paint or the wiring that's next to the pump. Here I'm starting to connect the positive and the ground leads to the ABS pump harness. If you recall, in the beginning of the video, I've shared with you which color to hook up to which um, lead so that you knew which one was positive and which one was ground. It's very important that you don't mix these up. But more importantly, you want to make sure that you don't cross the two because that will cause unnecessary damage to your pump. So here you can see I'm using alligator clips and you could use a more secure uh, method of attachment to that wire harness by using spade connectors because on the inside there are little prongs that you could use a spade connector to connect with. I didn't have those so I went ahead and used alligator clips with a rubber boot around them to ensure that the positive and the negative didn't contact. Now I'm applying my uh, reservoir for the old fluid to exit and I'm inserting the tool onto that bleeder screw. The tube has to go onto the bleeder screw first before you can attach the actual tool. And the reason being is, is that high pressure uh, push out of the fluid needs to be securely connected to that tube on that bleeder valve. If you have a partial connection you're going to lose all your fluid and it won't actually go into your catchment system over on the front side of the car you can see here. So I'm snaking the tool into uh, the area of the pump where that bleeder valve is. Here I'm testing to make sure that I have a good ground location. So I have the positive wire connected to the battery and I have a test lead connected to the ground. When that light illuminates, that's letting me know that I have a good ground. And the reason being is I wanna use a ground that is sufficient 
for the type of amberage that this pump pulls. If you recall at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that it uses a 50 amp fuse. You could use a smaller fuse, but you wanna make sure that you have a good ground for that connection because we're gonna use that to spin the pump up. With everything securely connected, you can go ahead and touch the negative terminal to your ground and slowly open up that bleeder valve. By doing that, you're spinning up the pump and opening up the exit or egress of that fluid to occur and dump into your catchment system. You can see here that the yellow fluid is starting to travel up through the tool tube and into the catchment system and I'm slowly spinning that pump. I'm only uh, doing this for about two seconds or so as not to overextend the pump. Once the pump has been uh, primed with new fluid, you can close off the valve. Now you may want to repeat this a couple times if you see air bubbles in your tubes. The reason being is that you want to make sure that not only you have clean fluid replacing it, as you can see there's clean fluid in that tube, but you want to make sure that there are no air bubbles. The air bubbles will actually cause the pump to run more and ultimately fatigue the pump motor, possibly leading to burnout. So we wanna make sure that one, we have clean fluid, but we also want zero air bubbles in that line. If you have no further air bubbles and you have clean fluid occurring and your reservoir has not run dry, then you can go ahead and disconnect everything. With everything disconnected, you want to use some brake cleaner or water to dilute any brake fluid that may have dropped during the process. This will ensure that you don't damage any of the wires or damage any of your paint. This is an important step, so don't overlook it because you can quickly turn a good situation into a bad situation if you leave brake fluid on painted surfaces or plastic parts for too long. Now let's take a look at that old brake fluid for a moment and see what it looks like. All right, so for those of you who think routine maintenance on your brake system isn't important, they really should take a look at this fluid. This fluid is just a year old and it is really, really yellow already. It should be absolutely clear, almost to the color of water, and we have quite a discoloration here. As it starts to get dirtier and dirtier, that will start to crystallize and it will start to gum up the internals of your ABS system and then ultimately take out the motor. So we um, extracted about this much fluid in there just to make sure we were totally clean and put really nice clean fluid in there. That, uh, that will allow us to preserve that pump and prevent, prevent further issues down the road.